I'm more competitive now, but when I was in high school and uh, college, I would be that guy that would help them and like give them pointers to make them better because I just love the sport track and field. I'm very competitive and I want to get faster. I know if I help you here and you get a little bit faster, that's going to make me more motivated to get faster kind of thing. I like competition. My biggest curse is the fact that I'm very analytical and it's hard for me to visualize things that haven't happened sometimes until I see certain metrics. 200 meter Olympic final. And so at least seeing myself amongst the fastest people in the world at the Olympic Games, the highest pinnacle of the sport, that gives me all the confidence I need. I was a four guy, so I came in thinking that I ran 19.8, 19.4 when they did. I was like, okay, I know what I'm doing. Bad, bad, Some daylight. Bad, bad. At this level, the coach is like, we need to fix this, fix this, fix that. So I was like, okay, that's like mind blowing for me. Without improving in technique, form, it made a big difference. In the year of 2021, the Olympic year, I had I mean, so many 200s under sub 20. Uh, 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 uh. 2022 was gonna be a big year, but then the injury happened. So now we gotta see what happens this year. We have a goal of getting the American record this year, and that was my goal last year. This year, we're gonna make up for that year, and this is what the goal is, and they're all on board. Small wins first, and then we can reach the big one. Second in the US trials, looked brilliant in qualifications. I talked to coach a couple days ago, I'm just saying, the Olympic year, I was close to gold, but that year, I was literally just running. Taking in his feedback, like he was like, hey, this is what you need to do. I'm like, yeah, 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 and then when I run the waist, yeah. I lost it's because I didn't listen to him. And he would always come to me and say, the information went through one ear, not the other. And I was just like, hey, you're right. When I got hurt, it made me like look back at the Olympics and the trials and all that stuff, just to kind of study what I did wrong. And mentally prepare myself for the next year. We did just enough to be able to get a medal after being out for two months and then training for about two months before running again. People don't remember who makes the finals unless you come away with the medal. In some cases, they don't care unless you win. I'm just sitting on the track right now looking at everybody else. It's like, you just, you just soak in that moment. It's like, damn, it's over. When you think about the Olympics, you don't think about just that one race. You think about all the training that led up to it, all the sacrifices you made, all those hard sessions. If you don't seize it, it's like, damn. I just let it go. There's been highs and then there's been those painful gut-wrenching like lows where it's just like, you just want so much more. You get so close, you get a taste of it. And it's just like, you're gonna come this close and we're just gonna take it away from you. You're not always gonna get what you intended to get, what you set out to do. But what are you gonna do about that? Are you gonna like, just give up and move on to the next thing? Or are you gonna tell yourself, no, I have to have this. I have to keep working. I have to figure out a way. When you go through something so many times and it doesn't happen, people start to lose faith, right? People are creatures of what they can see. And the thing about faith and vision and mindfulness and all that stuff is you have to manifest it and bring it to life. And until you do, a lot of people don't believe you.